Welcome to the next video in the Patterns in Nature topic. This video will be looking at the dot point, use available evidence to discuss using examples, the role of technology such as the use of radioisotopes in tracing the path of elements through living plants and animals. So where it says use available evidence, this video will provide you with a bit of a background information or a bit of background information, sorry, and you'll need to find some more information to find examples of technologies. In particular, they give you radioisotopes in tracing the path of elements through living plants and animals. So obviously, we need to look at substances that are able to move through the different transport systems in plants and animals that we've just looked at. So we looked at the circulatory system in animals and the vascular system, which is made up of the xylem and phloem in plants. So we need to be able to identify uh, technologies and why they're used in tracing the path of elements through these living organisms. So let's have a look at what radioisotopes are. So isotopes are atoms of the same element that have the same atomic number but a different mass number. Okay, so if you recall back to junior science, when we look at the uh, structure of an atom, we have the protons and neutrons in the inside of the nucleus and then our electrons floating around the outside. So the atomic number relates to the number of protons that are on, in the nucleus and the number of protons is equal to the number of electrons. Now, the mass number is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. So isotopes are atoms that have the same atomic number, so they are the same element, but because they have a different atomic mass, they have different neutrons in the nucleus, which accounts for the change in the mass. Some of these isotopes are radioactive and will undergo what we call radioactive decay. So every uh, each element has a particular what we call half-life, and during that half-life, half of the original amount of that radioactive substance is now left. And we can use those half-lives to tell us information about different things. So a radioactive isotope is shortened to a radioisotope, which takes us exactly back to our syllabus dot point. They can be used to trace the path, the path of elements through living plants and animals. So there we go. The role is to trace the path of elements and we use radioisotopes. So we're already on our way to the answering our syllabus dot point. However, we need to look at specific examples. There are many technologies that can detect radioisotopes, including Geiger counters, which is this machine down here on the right. And what this is, is this will identify the different amounts of radiation being given off by the radioisotopes in different parts of the plant. Okay, also nuclear imaging, which we can see in this picture on the left, uh, when the radioisotopes pass through the vascular or the cardiovascular system, the circulatory system of animals, in particular humans, obviously, the radioisotopes will show up as dark patches on the photographic film and the radiographs that are produced by these different machineries, such as x-rays, MRIs, etc. So a specific example of a radioisotope is carbon-14. So carbon usually has an atomic, num uh, atomic mass sorry, of 12. So they have 12 protons uh, and 12 neutrons. And 12 electrons. However, carbon 14 has two extra neutrons, making it obviously an isotope. So, what they can do is carbon dioxide that contains carbon 14 atoms rather than the normal carbon 12 atoms, which are stable and not radioactive, can be introduced into the plant. And this carbon dioxide ends up getting incorporated into the glucose that is produced during the process of photosynthesis. So, instead of having the plant take up the carbon dioxide by gas exchange through the stomata, people can or scientists can introduce carbon dioxide that has these different carbon atoms and then trace its path through the plant. So the technology used to trace carbon-14 in plants is an x-ray film. So the sugars that contain the carbon-14 atoms can be used to trace the products of photosynthesis and to find out the form that the sugar is transported in, the tissues that moves in, where it is transported to, and what happens to it when it reaches its next destination. So this obviously gives scientists really valuable information in finding out what exactly happens in the process of photosynthesis. How do plants use that carbon dioxide to create the glucose that they require for the
the process of respiration. So the use of carbon-14 has allowed scientists to propose that there is a series of about 15 reactions that take place to change the carbon dioxide to carbohydrates, as we know, such as glucose. So we've already looked at the light-dependent and the light-independent reactions, but these are sort of just the, the overall overarching banners that cover these 15 different reactions. So obviously, by using these carbon-14 atoms, scientists have found out so much more about the process of photosynthesis just than it being a process where uh, carbon dioxide and water is turned into glucose and oxygen. So a piece of technology that is used to detect radioisotopes is a positron emission tomography machine. So it's sometimes referred to as a PET machine. Okay, so as we can see from the pictures, its job is to detect the radioisotopes in the organisms. So the way that it works is a camera scans the patient and detects the radioisotope that has either been ingested or injected and accumulated in a target organ. So as we can see here, the target organ in this top image was the kidneys. So this patient has either um, drunk a solution of radio um, containing the radioisotope or it's been injected directly into their bloodstream and it is accumulated in the kidneys. Okay, here, the liver, again, the liver and the lymph nodes. This here would be probably looking for um, cancerous tissues in the lymph node. Uh, here we have a lung that looks like it's affected in some way and a bone or of some description down in this last image here. But we can definitely see uh, the introduction of the radioisotope has made those organs really visible on those scans. So the detected radio radioactivity sorry, is shown as an image on a computer screen and an example of a radio isotope used with PET technology is called gallium-67. So that's what is being used here in this bottom image here. So it's used to find cancers, okay, in the lymph nodes, as we said, in C, the bronchi and malignant melanomas, which we know are skin cancers that can lead to much more serious issues in people. So having such a, a quite a fairly straightforward procedure, so the ingestion or the injection of the radioisotope into the patient. There's no um, invasive surgery. They don't have to be cut open. They can simply take the um, solution or have it injected into them and then simply pass through basically a scanner for use of a better analogy of what the positron emission tomography machine is. And we can have these images being produced and doctors and surgeons can pinpoint the exact point where those affected organs are. And that brings us to the end of this video. So from now, from here, you need to do a little bit more research on radioisotopes and their uses uh, to be able to meet the syllabus dot point. And thank you for watching.